ROAS, or Return on Ad Spend, is an important advertising metric. In this video, we're going to take a quick tour of ROAS and how you can use it in your business. So, what is ROAS exactly? Well, it's a ratio of the revenue coming in from ads divided by the cost of those ads. ROAS equals revenue over cost. What does ROAS mean? Well, it's the bang for the buck. Essentially, it means for each dollar in ad spend you're making, how much revenue is coming back. So, for example, if ROAS is 3.95 or 395%, then you're getting back $3.95 for every dollar you're spending on advertising. If your ROAS is 0.42 or 42 cents, that means you're getting 42 cents back for every $1 spent on ads. Not so great. You're obviously losing money in that case. When do you use ROAS? Primarily, ROAS is used for allocation of ad spending decisions. So, for example, let's say you do both PPC and display advertising, and you're trying to decide how much to invest in each. Let's say display ads have an ROAS of 4.67. You're spending 7,000 a month. You're spending 1,500 a month and getting back 7,000 in revenue. PPC, on the other hand, you're spending 4,000 and getting back 12,000. That's an ROAS of 3.0. So in this case, display ads are giving you a better bang for the buck. You're getting $4.67 back for every dollar spent. All factors being equal, you should shift spending in this case from PPC to display advertising. So ROAS sounds a little bit like ROI or return on investment. How are they different? Well, ROAS is a revenue metric and ROI is a profit metric. If you were using ROI, you would be calculating the profits from your ads divided by the cost of your ads. Now, this is a more difficult calculation to make because you have to know a lot more about the business. You have to know the profitability of the products that your ads are selling relative to the rest of the business in order to calculate this. Fortunately, you don't often need to get down to that level of detail in order to make good allocation decisions because for a lot of businesses, essentially the profitability of the products being sold via advertising is relatively the same. So in that case, revenue is a good enough measure or revenue per ad dollar spent is a good enough measure to make those allocation decisions. But in order to be sure, this is something you should probably check out with senior management or accounting to know whether they want you to analyze ads based on profit or revenue. So, having said all that, what is a good ROAS? Well, 4.0 is a commonly used benchmark. And that means you're getting $4 back for every dollar spent in advertising or 25% of revenue is being spent on ads. Is that really good? It depends on your business and your operating margins. So, for example, if your operating margins are 20%, then a 4.0 ROAS is terrible because you're spending 25% of your revenue on ads, but your margins are only 20, you're already losing money. However, if you're, if you're selling something very profitable and your margins are 70%, then a 4.0 ROAS is great and you're still making a lot of money even after spending 25% of revenue on advertising. What are some of the challenges in tracking ROAS? Well, there are two, and uh, they're basically attribution and customer lifetime value. So attribution means understanding which customers came in from your ads. Now, this can be easy in some cases, like if, you're, if you have a web store, people click on an ad and they put something in the shopping cart and buy it and check out right away, and that's pretty simple. You know that the customer that clicked the ad bought the product, and that revenue should be part of your ROAS. However, let's say it's a little more complicated. Customer clicks, they come in, they look around, they leave, they go, they do some comparison shopping. Uh, maybe it's a, it's a high margin item, they need to do a lot of research uh, about it before they buy it. So they, they read some blog posts, they, maybe they see a post on social media, and then they come back in four days, and then they buy. So does that revenue get attributed to the ad? That depends on, on your attribution model and uh, you know some decisions about the business and how you want to track things. So that gets complicated. Most companies have an attribution model that they use for marketing to decide which revenue gets allocated to which ads. And in order to track ROAS accurately, you need to understand those attribution models. The second issue is customer lifetime value. And that is, you know, how much revenue can we expect to get from each new customer? So let's say, for example, <clears throat> 
you're in a subscription business and uh, you run an ad somebody clicks on the ad and they subscribe to your product well they may check out right then and there and pay the first month of that subscription um, ROAS should capture that first month for sure but how many other months should be in that so is the customer going to stay around and be a subscriber for 10 months a year two years you know, you know depending on what your expectations are uh, you need, may need to adjust the revenue that you uh, allocate to your ROAS calculation. Um, you may use some kind of average like saying hey a customer usually stays around for 24 months so if it's a $10 a month subscription we're going to allocate $240 of revenue to that new customer for the purposes of calculating ROAS. Some tools like Google Analytics will calculate ROAS for you. That may sound great but you've got to be careful about whether you can use those calculations and it's going to depend again on what type of business you're in. So in Google Analytics the ROAS calculation is basically e-commerce revenue that's tracked by the Google Analytics e-commerce module divided by your AdWords costs. Now this might be okay for a web store where again somebody is clicking on an ad, they're coming in and in the same session they're checking out and um, you know that's their revenue. In that case you're capturing pretty much everything there is to know about the revenue and the costs and your ROAS will be accurate. Again, getting back to that subscription example, this is not such a great way to calculate ROAS in a subscription business because, again, in that checkout, in that cart, we're only capturing one month's revenue from a customer that's probably going to be with us for a couple of years. And um, so we're way undercounting revenue and the ROAS calculation is going to be way off. Now, there are more details about this, including some examples from Google Analytics in the blog post. So so check that out if you're interested in understanding more about how Google Analytics calculates ROAS. Conclusions. First, use ROAS to measure the relative effectiveness of ad spending. That's allocation decisions like whether we should do PPC versus display ads. Second, remember that operating margins determine the ROAS that you need to achieve for your business. Third, remember that attribution and customer lifetime value are the key to accurately tracking ROAS and depending on the type of business that you have you may need to do attribution and customer lifetime value calculations a little differently. Lastly, if you're using a tool like Google Analytics to calculate ROAS, make sure you understand how that tool is making the calculation and whether it's relevant for your business.